Remember that song at all? I mean, anybody, you know? The sun shines and people forget. The spray flies, the speedboat glides, but people forget. The girl smiles, but people forget. The snow packs and the skiers track, but people forget. And forget they're hiding behind an eminence front. Beyond an eminence front, it's a put on bullshit, 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 bullshit. Oh uh, man, a real honest guy wrote that. His name was Pete Townsend. And okay, maybe I'm going a little far calling him honest, but let's just say brutally honest guy. <laughs> Named Pete Townsend, who a lot of people say that his only misfortune in life is that he didn't die before he got old, just like he wrote in my generation. He was the a uh, guitarist for The Who. He has many solo projects. A lot of music out there that you've heard in the 70s, the 80s, and even some of the 90s is actually his. Uh, he was a great songwriter. He was a great producer. Um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. But today is a good day to celebrate, and this is why I'm not singing, playing guitar here today, because this is the thousandth subscriber episode of Nerf News from the Owl Ranch, episode 18. Thank you guys for giving me a thousand subs. I really, really appreciate it. Today we're going to go over a few things. It's been a bit of a slow week, but there are some things I haven't reported on and some things I uh, have been meaning to, and also some new developments have come up. So, uh, without any further ado, do do. $119 SGD, which is probably around... I'd say about $80, $85, $90 American, depending on what the Singapore dollar is doing at the moment. That is a lot of fucking money for and basically what is an Alpha Trooper now called the Accu Trooper, basically, because it's been accuratized and it has a nice stock and it does have a 25 round drum. That's cool. Oh, it's just, you know what? My friend's idea, uh, Jethro Toll, who is also the guy, he's also known as Boom Tendo, had, to, had actually a better idea. Buy from Kohl's. Remember I was like saying that, okay, they don't make them anymore, they don't sell them anymore, and, they, and he said, oh no, they have them on the Kohl's site. Okay, well, uh, I don't really go over the Kohl's site, so I didn't know. That actually is a better idea, because this is, oh man, unless you really are like obsessed with this stock, or you're really obsessed with, with AccuStrike, I don't know one person who's obsessed with AccuStrike. Everybody thinks like I do, that AccuStrike is really AccuSuck. Um... There really isn't a reason to buy this one and not go aftermarket for an EAP or go to Colton and get it. Because that's a lot of money. Your other fallacy is this. That it's a Toys R Us exclusive. And we all know, most places now, what's happened to Toys R Us. Jeffrey has packed his bags and has left. Which means there's only a few places like Singapore. Toys R Us is still in Singapore. Okay, This is in Singapore. Um... I think he found this at the Suntech Mall. Oh, that's Ty, my friend Ty, uh, where he found this. I think he found this at Suntech City. Um, but also in news, um, the long shot in Singapore, 40 SGD, 40 for an elite long shot. How beautiful is that, dude? Yeah, man, especially with the new kits coming out, the, the worker stuff coming out, or the jet stuff coming out, the new stuff with the long shot coming out. Uh, that's really cool. That is really bitching, yeah. A uh, friend of mine, um, Vectorworks, working on a breach that doesn't take any more than PEDG and the breach to do. No kidding. So basically, you can keep all your same internals. All you're changing is the breach. You're cutting up the plunger tube. You're putting an O-ring on that. You put in a piece of PEDG into your gate. You fasten that to your gate. Boom. You have something that can shoot 10, uh, you know, 10 kilo kilogram spring. Do like 180, 190 FPS. It's pretty good. It gets people started is a nice thing. And here we have all of these new things that are less money. We have a metal kit. Now it's going for 189 USD. Okay. Shipped from Singapore. It's probably 210, 220, 230, depending on where you are. But still, it's a lot better than the than the days in the past where it cost $500 to get an Explore kit. Uh, artifact. You had the Artifact kits, but they didn't have, at the time didn't have bolt studs, all that. Now they do. 
uh, and, the, and the worker kit, you know, uh, those are also gone down in price. So, so things are becoming a little more economical. And in that day and age, things are economical. 120 SGD? You gotta be kidding me, dude. That, that is extortion for an EAT. What do I think of how it looks? I don't like this white. Do you see this white up here on, on top of, on top by the, by the pump, by the pump grid? It matches nothing else on the blaster. Uh, uh, maybe the magazine. Actually, the magazine looks like it's a little white there, but it's just not cool. Why didn't they make it this gray color or this white? See how now you have the two whites that are fighting each other? Yeah, it's the reason on the Divergent series they went with the blue because when you put it together on a normal pink crush with the white and the off white, it just looks ugly. You know, I'm guessing that this is like an off gray kind of a tip soothing kind of color. Mm. I would have made this color this color. I would have made this color this color, or this color, and mm, now I make this color this uh, this color this color because you still have the pump grip. But but I don't, also don't like the colors on. It, but it does have the attachment point on it. It is unique to the other Alpha Alpha Troopers in a way that it is the Accu Strike one, and it does have the barrel adapter on it where your normal EATs do not have a barrel adapter. Here, let me pull out a real old school one for you right here. See how. It doesn't have the barrel adapter, or even better. Yeah, that's right. Cartea has EATs. Can you believe that? Yeah, or this one right here. This is my typical running gun HVZ um, EAT. Okay, um, it's got the um, it's it's got the um, what do they call that? <sighs> that one flyable blaster. I forget. But um, the stockade stock on it. It's got um, an 8K in it. It shoots pretty good. It's a pretty good blaster, but nowadays you also have other alternatives. You have, uh, we've got the Star Wars Stormtrooper blaster. You know that one's a pretty good one. It's got a shorter barrel. You've got a lot of really, you know, great things that are going on here. And there's so many other alternatives you can do other than paying a hundred nineteen ninety or what is essentially hundred twenty bucks Singapore. Not to mention us guys in the U.S. would still have to ship this fucking thing. Yeah, you could be out a hundred and fifty dollars just to ship this. Ow, ooh, right on my ankle. Thank you, vintage, vintage AT. You're going over there. Yeah. So, my opinion is, this is a no go. Don't get it. A lot of people ask me if I were to have a Nerf company, maybe, you know, like uh, Cartier Research and Design, maybe Madman Mods. One guy brought up that you know you should just call your company Madman Mods. That would be pretty bitching. Okay, uh, one guy I would hire as a designer, especially to work on my flywheel and tactical stuff, is definitely Heath Hale. This week, he introduced this solenoid pusher flywheel blaster. It's very nice. It's got the nice top rail on it for sights. It's got the nice barrel on it. Uh, he says it's, it's doing low. It's doing about 150 uh, feet per second, but it's solenoid pusher into flywheel. Okay, here's why I think it's going slow. You want to know why? This barrel. It's just that's just a lot of drag for flywheels. Flywheels are best out, of course, doing it like right out the barrel. Now, of course, you know a lot of Heath's designs aren't like that, and I think what he's trying to do with the barrels, he's trying to accurtize it a bit so that it doesn't have the the play that you have um, with flywheel. Um, I've seen a few other flywheel designers try to tighten that gap between the wheels and stuff, and I think he's trying to do it with the barrel just like he did with the pigeon, which is in this picture right here. This is in your sniper community. That's a good blaster, but I just see a string of hits with this guy. This guy is just a great designer. But but look at the design. Look at the receiver, the two tone receiver right here. The barrel, the barrel attachment. Yeah, it's just he he's got it. He he has the aesthetics very nicely down. I even think that if I had internals, which I'm very good at designing internals, I'm not the best at, at designing externals. Okay, in SolidWorks. Uh, he he could really design me a really great design based off of internals I give him and the uh, amount of space I need around things and the mag wall and everything else. I think he could do really good. If I get an IPO, I'm de he's definitely probably m one of my first hires if I can get him if I can get to hire him if I can get him to do work because he's just bitching. Look at this guy; he lives nerf. Here's another copy of the pigeon right there. Wow. I'm really impressed with this. And I think, oh, whatever velocity issues you're having, you're going to fix it like we all do. We all just work on it. Yeah. Um, 
keep up the good work. He's it's yeah, absolutely great. You guys hear me mention him a lot because I love his MHP 15, his pigeon, and now this. I think this is a really cool design. And maybe he can put like an afterburner on it or something. I don't know. But I think what he's going for is not really an afterburner design. It's more of an accuratized design. But man, if this was a Springer. And I had a spring back here, and I had that longer barrel. Ooh, you know I'm a fan of long barrels. Everybody knows I'm a fan of long barrels and accuracy and hitting people at ranges that you can't even wing a dart in my direction. Yeah, that's that's me, and I really love this. This is really, really cool. Really cool. I've been avoiding this last year. I have been avoiding the the, the, the Blizzard uh, Rival Overwatch last year. I have been avoiding it, yes. There's reasons why, okay? <clears throat> it seems that any time that Hasbro does something that is uh, Star Wars themed or something like that, I mean, here, let me give you a really great example of a very underwhelming Star Wars blaster. I got this for Christmas. My sister bought it for me for Christmas. So, of course, you know, I need weaker blasters just to play with kids. So I figured, you know what, why not? It doesn't even shoot suctions, which is sad. But it's kind of like the Dima Star, but it's, you know, it's not even that good. I mean, really. I mean, I just hit the, the hit, hit, hit the tripod with it and didn't even knock it down. I'm sure you shot a little shake or something. But any time that Hasbro does something gimmicky, it seems to be underwhelming. I can only name, you know, a, a part of a franchise or something seems to be underwhelming. I can only name one exception to that rule. Perhaps one. I'm sure there's others. But off the top of my head... I can name one, and I think you guys know what that exception is, and that is, of course, the Deadpool Blasters. Um, these turned out really great. Uh, the Kronos, they were built on a heavy-duty platform. I think they were going to come out with the Kronos anyway, which I think what would happen with these, okay? But every time I see something that is just themed, it, it just sucks, and this thing seems to have a lot of the same shit going on. Sure, if you like Overwatch, I don't play Overwatch, but I'm sure if there was a Fortnite blaster, I might think of it. If they if they if they broke out like a nerf version of the Scar or something, I might actually consider getting it. Especially if I had long shot internals, so that'd be great. Um, but three round capacity and eighty feet per second. Now I'm comparing this. Let's pull out a let's let's pull out one of my Deadpools again and let's compare this. Um, this is a Deadpool. 160 foot per second modded, 18 kilogram, um, 18 kilogram uh, chrono. So put in mind, this isn't an 18.5. An 18.5 would be really efficient for this. The ball would fly everywhere. I tried it. I put the, this adapter in here, and I tried it. The speed was outrageously fast. I got like 170, 180 feet per second, but I, it, the ball had no control. And I just feel like it needs a longer barrel or something that you can't really put on here, or at least not put on here and lose the profile. And these I did not want to lose the profile. I already got a Kronos that has lost the profile, and I turned into kind of an SNG kind of a carbine. Thank you very much. But you compare these, compare it to the common parts, compare it to the grip. The grip looks smaller, the trigger looks smaller. Uh, I know this is not to scale, but if you look at the, at the, at the barrel, you can see that it's about... Mm, Maybe about two thirds of the size. I don't really see much room for a big plunger tube in there. Maybe there's one, maybe the size of the big shock in there. And I think that that's why we're getting 80 feet per second instead of 90, which you saw the video, if you didn't look at it, where I said, why are the Kronos is 90 feet per second? And it had to do with the fact that if, I, if you were to take the same spring and go up one more gauge, you would be at 110 feet per second. But if you go with the gauge that, uh, spring that I had, which was about 1.7 millimeters, then you had 90 feet per second. And in the industry, there is no other gauge rather than uh, that's between 1.7 and 1.8 that's commercially available for a 7 8 diameter spring. And that's why this is 90 feet per second. I don't think that that's the case with this. I think the case with this is it has a small plunger tube. Um, I'm guessing the draw probably goes about here. Um, because if this extends out to here, that's about as far as it can extend. It probably has about an inch and a half, two inches of draw. Where this has two and a third draw. So I'm, all, I'm seeing indications of smaller draw. I'm thinking that the plunger tube is probably smaller. And even though you can probably throw, maybe, maybe you can put a K26 in there. Maybe you can put a stronger spring in there. It'll never be as good as a Kronos. And it will be three rounds on top of that. So, 
This is another one that I take a pass on, and the reason is very simple. I'm not an Overwatch fan. It's gimmicky, okay? And eh, I see a lot of indications of them weakening the blaster, either because they, they thought that the Kronos was just a little too powerful of a modded blaster if you mod it, and so they decided to weaken it, or because of size constraints. This blaster does look to be smaller. It does look to be like a baby Kronos, but I don't think it is. The good news is about this, however, is I don't think it's geared. I think it's just a straight prime right here. Um, and it looks pretty handy. Yeah. I mean, it has, of course, a rabbit keychain. You can't go without a rabbit keychain. I would just take this off and put it on my keys, but, you know, I know, I know. Well, okay, so GameStop. Online, you can find a, a lot of good blasters on GameStop. Not that I would buy from them, and not only that, when you go in the store, and they're like, hey, do you guys got the Star Wars, you know, Star Trek Blaster? And they're like, what? What's that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like, they're not really into it. They don't understand. But, uh, just the other day, I walked into a GameStop, because I'm trying to find a Stormtrooper Blaster for my friend, and they have been hard to find, okay? They brought back the Deadpools. They're $69, they upped to 10 bucks. Remember that time when I shopped for my, my nephew and my niece and they were 10 bucks more and I was like, so I was mad, you know? Um, they are back. I think they're good if you want a two gun and you just, you want to keep them and you just like the whole Deadpool thing. I think they're good, but to be honest with you, you know, the normal Chronoses are great and they have been very hard. It's been very hard to find the, the Star Wars um, the, the, Star, the Star Wars Rival Blaster, the Stormtrooper Blaster. I've been having a very hard time finding that, you know. Um, they are a hundred bucks, okay, unavailable online. Um, everybody I've heard have gotten them or, or have them, it's pre-order, okay. Um, but yeah, there it is. And another case of they didn't make enough of them. Um, do I think this is going to be weak like the Overwatch Blaster? I think it's going to be weak. No, I think it's actually probably pretty good. Um, it's probably based off of the, um, probably based a lot of, off the Apollo architecture. So it's probably a really a good blaster. Um, but I just, yeah, you know, I, they, they, uh, they're just very hard to find. And, I, and that's really, really sad that they're hard to find. Because I really think... That unlike the normal Star Wars stuff, which all suffer from being weak, like this one's 100 feet per second. I mean, if I can live having a Star Wars blaster for indoor wars, that is 100 feet per second. Especially if I was that big into Star Wars as my friend is, he actually dresses as a stormtrooper. And no, he doesn't do it to be kinky. He actually does it for a living sometimes, and that's pretty cool. So this is like his life, okay, and his lifestyle. And I, I would just, yeah, I would. Totally go for it. But, you know, why did they have to have such a shortage? I, you know, I wanted the Deadpool Chronos Blasters. Not only because they were first, but because I heard they had a big plunge of tube. The news I saw them was pretty good. It seemed like a solid blaster. No gears. So, of course, I was curious about the Chronos from day one. No gears. And when they finally came out with the white one, I didn't want to take these ones apart. I, I bought this. And, oh, yeah. You know, I, I modded this to, to be, to be Stefan. But I've been having a hard time locating one, and it's been, it's been tough because Star Wars is, of course, a much more popular franchise than Deadpool, as you can imagine. Yeah. So when, when we, we get more into these <coughs> franchise blasters, we're going to see a lot more problems like this. <sighs> we're going to see a lot more problems like this, and... Unfortunately, um, we're going to see problems with looks and collector's uh, value rather than power and effectiveness, rather than it being a good blaster, rather than, you know. But I think this and this are definitely exceptions to that rule. But most of the, of the Star Wars stuff, you know, if somebody gives it to me as a gift, I'll take it. But usually I, am, I focus on having a few blasters that are great. And I mod them like Formula One cars. I work on them like Formula One cars. I work my ass off on them. You know. I'm not the guy who is proud of having 200 blasters. Which, yeah, I have over 200 blasters. Most of them are in storage. But what the hell good does that do, right? 
you're better off just buying a few and there it is. But there are so many people that are just, oh, I gotta have it, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. I've heard quite mixed reviews on this. The uh, new chronograph for <clears throat> the Nerf Blasters. Some people say it's great, some people say it's garbage. You know, um, the, the main consensus is, is that the new Nerf Chronograph, it just doesn't, it doesn't read very well past 200. And that's to be expected, and uh, Nerf was not designing it to shoot, like, some high-power long shot through it. Now, of course, I've seen this in, in, a, in a Schoon League as early as 2014, where they put it into a recon barrel adapter. As a matter of fact, the first chronograph I ever used was actually in a recon barrel adapter. And I think it was, was it Bradley who did it? Yeah, I think it was Bradley Mathis, the Robo Man, who, who did it. Yeah. So, this isn't anything new, okay? It, it's not anything new, this, uh, this technology. But it is the first time that Nerf has done it. And, of course, it just seems that any time that Nerf tries to do something, let's say the night vision thing for the, um, for the Modelist, which... It, it, you know, it's pretty good, but it has no crosshairs in it, and it's a digital screen. The zoom's a digital zoom, which means it's low resolution, and you can get a Thermal Hunter for 25 bucks, and it has the same thing. I mean, it's like, eh. You know, anytime they, they try to do something gimmicky, it doesn't really fly. And I say that about the Modelist line. Like, the Modelist line could have been a better line. Had they uh, had thought out the, their, uh, their, um, their gimmicks a little better. Had they thought out the air blaster better? Had they thought out the stock gun better? Had they thought out the dual mags? Like, they have dual 12s attached to each other. That's cool, but why didn't you do that with 18s? Hmm, yeah. So, you know, 118 would be more effective than 212s by the simple reason of I don't have to flip it, and I'm only losing six rounds, okay? Um, yeah, say the same thing about the Infanus. Same thing. Or the infamous, I call it the infamous, because it has an asshole in the back of the blaster. So it's pointing at you, and, you know, I just hope it doesn't get a bad case of diarrhea. Imagine darts just flying at you. Yeah, diarrhea. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's great. So I can sit here, I can have my blaster, right? It can have a 25-round drum in it, and I can just, just throw in rounds. <coughs> like some lever gun or something. That's great. But what about all the other magazines? Are you going to, like, take out your magazine every time and, and, and take your empty magazines and your kids are going to just, you know, okay, great, that one's done. Next one, okay, so I'm just going to, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day, kid, okay, and she, that was what she wanted to do, and I was like, no. <laughs> you, you don't tell me that you're going to have, like, four or five magazines, maybe ten. In this day and age, people carry a lot of magazines, especially the flat 18s and the flat 12s and the worker 22s and stuff like that. And the, you, you got to load them external. And, you know, this little girl was like, oh, no, you know, I hate loading magazines. I can't do it. Well, it's really easy. Here, I'll show you. But, you know, and it's a, it's a good point to a kid who might not have 50 magazines um, to have one and he, she doesn't have to open up the, to load it manually, the blaster does it for it. That's great, but if you can't do it in battle with an external mag, what is the point? I know that there is a different market for Nerf other than um, the high speed step and stuff that I do, okay, or half length that I do. Uh, I understand that, okay, but let's face it to be really good at Nerf, you have to look at the concepts of normal shooting that works. Um, and you have to do that. And one thing is how to load mags effectively. I kind of don't like the fact that that is, well, might not be teaching our kids to load their magazines effectively or to use, like, that blaster to load all their magazines. I think that's just ridiculous, guys. That's just ridiculous. No. Uh, I think it, it's kind of going backwards in a way. You know, the Monolith, it had scope. It had a real scope in it. Like a real one power with a red dot or, you know, one half or one at uh, 1.75. My friend, Alan Torino, was... We were talking at Denny's, and I told him that I have a, I have a three by nine uh, forty on there, yeah. And he was saying, "Oh, yeah, that's just too much zoom for me. Uh, I really more like two power or one point seven five or one and a half, and you know, for a Nerf blaster. And then if it had enough slope for it, if they really designed for it, it wouldn't be that expensive to make a good one and a half or a good two power 
um, you know, that isn't okay. Maybe it doesn't have nitrogen fill gaps and maybe it's not ground glass and stuff like that but still practical enough for kids to play and actually get something out of it instead of those stupid fake scopes come on you know why don't we get something that actually aims where you have crosshairs that actually work and uh, orient to the target and why not make it so you have a little bit of uh, elevation maybe 20 moa of elevation where a normal scope has 10 or 5 okay uh, I think that one has five each side, but my building is good enough. I only needed like two uh, to to cite it, you know. And um, yeah, you know, I mean, why why not do that? Today, I am going on Earth Haven. That's right, because we have an actual real war. What I call real war, a war for my kind of shooter. Rhombus, August twenty fifth, nine thirty a.m. Rolling Hills uh, Park uh, in Fullerton, I believe it is. Yep, Rolling Hills Park, Fullerton, 2700 Maple. Come by, swing by. Uh, same old Armageddon, Armageddon rules. The same rules. Same thing. No hard, no no F, no F, FNJs, no metal tips. Um, if you have to use washer slugs, use number six. Felt tips on washer slugs, okay? And nothing uh, under 1.3, nothing above 1.3 grams. The usual rules. It, it's pretty. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. But <coughs> this is going to be a good one. And you know, Fullerton's got some really great parks. We played a. Um, I played a couple wars in Fullerton. It's pretty good. Last time I played in Placentia was pretty good. Except, well, we had a few uh, out of hand park guests that tried to play soccer in the middle of us setting up for CTF. You guys may have seen that vid. Um, but, um, we're pretty cool guys. This is, uh, Cannibal. Cannibal's pretty cool. Uh, pretty good flywheel player. Pretty good all-around player. I mean, I think I've seen him with all sorts of blasters, not just flywheel, but, you know, I've seen him with snap pulls. I've seen him with, you know, lots of stuff. He's a pretty versatile player. A pretty cool crew to play with. So, if you got the high power stuff, yeah, show up. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to see you. Um... August 18th, that's next week, we have a war, um, at Manhattan Beach Nerf Club has a war, Pollywog Park in Manhattan Beach, that's right off of Manhattan Beach Boulevard, um, that's gonna be, last I heard it was going to be 12.30, but I originally thought it was 11.30, yeah, so, um, I'll have to check into that, but, yeah, 11.30, Pollywog Park, um, that's going to be 200 feet per second in underwater, which means, of course, I can play with something like this. You know, the one that more represents the real archer pistol. <laughs> what it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we, um, uh, you know, August 18th, we also have the uh, Riverside War. Um, SoCal Nerf is doing a war in Riverside. I think that starts at like 930 um, it's going to be hot, though, dude. You're, I, I think you're better off going to the beach. And I'm not saying that biased. I'm saying that as in, I know California <laughs> and Riverside area is going to get hot. I, I personally would not want to go to a war that hot. But if I had to bring lots of water, Gatorade, it's going to be a big war. Unlike Manhattan Beach, which usually has about 12, 15 people. This is going to have a lot of people. You may dig that. You may not. But if you want to go, go ahead and go. It, it, it ought to be a really good war. Um, they put on a pretty good game. It's basically modded stock. It's it's nothing powerful. No Steph and stuff. Nothing like that. Uh, so, yeah. It's mostly... Ri I see a lot of rivals. A lot of nemesis stuff there. Um, but pretty good turnout. I've, I've, I've seen wars. Where they've had hundreds of people. The one I went to, I think, had like 80 people go. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, until next time, this is Chris Cartier saying don't you go changing or I'll find you and I will make you target practice. <laughs>